Welcome to another episode of Out of Home Insider, the loudest voice in Out of Home. Today is a completely uh, unorthodox episode. A student of mine, I, I adjunct uh, or, or did adjunct at my alma mater here in Hackettstown, New Jersey. It's called Centenary University. It's a small liberal arts school tucked here in the hills of Hackettstown. And one of my students from the spring semester reached out because he had a project to do. So uh, I said, you know what? Rather than you just interview me and we put it on a tape recorder and it dies somewhere in a in a drawer, why don't we do this as an episode of the podcast? So sit back, relax. Noah Pishkopia from Centenary University is going to interview me. And I'm going to talk about a lot of things that I've probably never talked about before. I'm usually the one asking the questions. So this go around, you're going to get to hear my take on a whole bunch of stuff. Noah did a great job of putting the questions together and a great job leading the episode. So Noah, thanks so much for doing it. If you're looking for super talented people, because I know that hiring is a big deal right now, Noah is on the market. Noah is going to be graduating from Centenary this spring. He's already Geopath certified. That's right. A graduating senior who is Geopath certified. In fact, there's eight of them somewhere out there in the world. Uh, they were all in my class. So Definitely uh, sit back, relax, enjoy this episode. And if you're wondering what we're up to at one screen, check it out. One screen.ai. We've got a lot of new stuff going on. The directory is getting bigger and bigger every day, launching some really cool campaigns. Uh, so if you want to check in on what we're doing, check it out there. It's one screen.ai. And without further ado, let's go. Welcome, everybody, to the Out of Home Insider Show, a podcast like no other, hosted by the one and only Tim Rowe. Ready to have some knowledge dropped on you and to be entertained because nothing's more valuable than food for your brain. So sit back, relax, we're about to dive in as the best industry podcast is about to begin. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Instead of me asking all the questions, I've got a special guest who's going to ask me some questions. Uh, we've got Noah Pishkopia. He was actually in a digital analytics class that I taught at my alma mater last spring. And for anyone out there listening, looking for super talented uh, young people to add to the team, he's Geopath certified. Yes, that's right. You heard it here first, folks. He is Geopath certified. Noah, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. So normally we start with origin stories. Uh, so you're you're just at the beginning of your career, but why don't you just tell tell everybody a little bit about yourself, where are you from, what are you studying, where do you go to school? All right, so I am a senior at Sentinel University, where Tim went in Hackettstown, New Jersey. I grew up in Hackettstown and in Alamuchi, which is right next to Hackettstown, but is much, much, much smaller. I am getting a degree in business administration with a concentration in social media marketing and a minor in just marketing. And yeah, I uh, got interested in marketing when I was in high school and I did some stuff for my high school's like fan section and stuff like helping organize different events for, it was mainly basketball because like that's where all my like friends played and stuff. Then I was like, you know, I kind of like this. Like this is fun. Like I enjoy it. I liked like, I liked targeting different demographics and getting people together. Then I started doing it for a local restaurant and did a good job at that. So I was like, yeah, I like this. So here we are now. Cool. And here we are. And, uh, and then I made you get geopath certified. And yeah. I'm sure at that point, um, you'd never thought about billboards as, as being like a targeted measurable type of yeah. advertising show. what do you think here? Just give us like the 32nd, like as a, as a, at the time, as a junior in college, um, without exposure previously to out of home, like what, what do you think about all that stuff? I thought it was really interesting. I never really like had a class that really focused on that stuff. So I thought it was cool. Cause that's, I think that's pretty much what we did for the whole semester was talk about like out of home marketing, OOH and that kind of stuff. So I thought it was interesting. It was a lot different from just the usual, like go ahead and audit this social media page. What would you do for this? Like brochure. So I thought it was a lot cooler to go ahead and, made those websites and like the blogs and stuff. I thought it was really different. I think it actually did a lot for me to see like different avenues and ways to market to people. Awesome. Now it's cool. We're going to have to link to that. What Noah was referencing is uh, part, part of the class. One of the projects was to create a personal portfolio website. Um, one to learn how to build a website and learn some of those mechanics, 
but two, also because the class started writing blogs. And Noah's got some published blogs about his experience taking the GeoPass certification. Noah, you're going to have to send me uh, the link to your page. And what we'll do is we'll link to it in the show notes. So if you're listening to this, check out Noah's portfolio page. It's in the show notes below. Um, and, and they did a great job. So I particularly liked Noah's blog. Don't tell anybody else. I guess it's on the, it's on the record now. I liked your blog the best. So um, I liked your style of writing. I thought that you really like kind of digested what, what Geopath did down into very uh, bite sizable pieces. So Noah, you've got a class project and that class project is to ask me some questions. So yeah. I'm going to turn the mic over to you and uh, we'll, we'll just see where this goes. All right. So, yeah. So for my project, we had to come up with a bunch of different questions, whatever kind of questions that we wanted. It wasn't really anything that was like, you need to ask this, need to ask this. But the only thing that I, I guess, need to ask is a bit about you. So go ahead and tell me about you know, your uh, origin story, like you said. Oh, man. All yeah, right. Yeah. So, all right. So sit back and relax, kids. Um, it. It's it's a bit of a uh, it's a bit of a tattered journey. And I don't know, actually, know that I've ever told this story on the record of like how I got to be an out of home. Um, I like you am from Hackettstown area here in New Jersey. I grew up just town over in Mansfield and uh, um, was working at a Ford dealership that's now a Dollar General right next to a brewery on Main Street. So uh, I was working there in the parts department and a recruiter from the Marine Corps came in one day and was like, what are you doing with your life, kid? And I joined the Marine Corps uh, at 22 to get out of town and kind of see the world and and see what else was out there for me Um, and had just the most incredible time. I got to work with amazing people and in some really, really important like missions and did travel the world and got to do a lot of amazing things. Um, But when I came back, back I had to make the decision of like am I staying in the Marine Corps am I am I gonna get out I was married at the time and uh decided to move back home here to to Hackettstown and uh decided to go to Centenary and get my degree and the logical thing to do seemed to be to get a degree in finance because I absolutely hate math I failed fundamentals of geometry as a junior in high school so I decided that getting a finance degree made sense and uh through that process started dabbling in some entrepreneurial things, kind of like you doing some marketing for some other folks and, and things like that. And, uh, but I'd gone back to work in the car business while I was getting my degree. So, um, one of the things that's tough about the automotive industry is that you work on weekends. It's a lot of late nights. It's a lot of missing holidays and baseball games and barbecues and things like that. So I knew I didn't want to work in automotive for the rest of my life, got my degree, um, was kind of able to get out of the car business and actually responded to an ad on Craigslist that was talking about automotive advertising. And I didn't send my resume because I totally thought it was a scam, Um, but it turned out to be legitimate. And I worked there for a couple of years and that's where I cut my teeth in advertising. Um, never in my life having bought a billboard, but spending, you know, a lot of money for clients on advertising on things like TV and radio and ads on the internet and direct mail and those sorts of things, but never bought a billboard. And then ended up a few years later working for a billboard company. And uh, I wasn't there to sell billboards. I was there to sell display ads, like the little things on our phones. And uh started asking clients who were doing billboards and display ads. I started asking them for Google analytics uh, access. And what I saw consistently was that when clients added billboards, their organic traffic went up, their direct traffic went up, their conversion goals went up. And I thought that was so amazing as somebody who had had seen and spent a lot of money in digital marketing specifically, it was hard to kind of get results like that, where you're seeing 30, 40, 50% growth month over month. Um, to do that online was just really, really hard to do then and even harder to do now. So um, I asked my colleague and counterpart at the time, uh, a woman named Allie Rupi. I said, Allie, like, who's got the podcast about this stuff? Who's talking about out of the home? This is so cool. And she said, there really isn't one. So I got a 30 30- $55 Logitech camera and I had a MacBook Pro that was like 10 years old and, and couldn't stay on long enough for like a 30 minute Zoom. 
And I just started asking people to talk to me about out of home. I was completely new to the industry. I knew nobody. And then a few months later, COVID, I got furloughed. My position got eliminated. And uh, and along the way, I, I met the founders of the company that I'm at now, One Screen, and uh, and had the CEO on the on the show. And uh, asked I asked Sam to mentor me, um, and he did. And for the next two months, we met one hour a week, and uh, and then. Sam invited me on onto the team and it's going to be almost a year next week, which is crazy. So that's a, that's, that's the origin story. in in I guess 180, maybe 240 seconds. That's uh that's it. That's it to, to tell basically out of high school to now. How'd I do? I did a, a swell job. Thank you. Thank you. A, a, a very bang up job. Thank you. No five star review for you. Yeah, of course. So I guess that sort of leads into another question I had was, uh, how has the podcast helped you? Like in terms of like, like obviously you said why you started it. So how is yeah. it? How do you think it's helped you? I mean, just unbelievably. So I remember the episode that I realized the power of the podcast. And that was in February. It was actually right as, uh, oh, it was, it was, it was March. It was March 13th. Actually, I think it was a Friday the 13th. This was right before things started to shut down due to COVID. Uh, I had Mr. Brian Rappaport from Qua Media Group, who's been a, a, a repeat visitor here on the podcast and somebody that the industry just absolutely loves and world, world-class gentleman. And I realized after the conversation with Brian that the, that the opportunity for the podcast as a, as a, as a vehicle to develop relationships was maybe the most powerful component of it. I hadn't, I hadn't considered that before. I thought about it from the, oh, this is going to be a great way to learn. I can talk to really smart people. Um, I like to read, but there's no books really. Like, and there's blogs and stuff, but that's going to take me forever. Like, I just need to start talking to people about the stuff. Um, and it was that conversation with Brian that I realized the power of the podcast to develop relationships. So that's probably been the thing that's helped the most with. It's how I met the co-founders of One Screen. Um, it's ultimately why I'm able to still do the podcast. And it's my favorite part because it's people that I look at that I look up to personally in the industry, and then they become friends. And to be able to do that and be able to do business together and like do really special campaigns for just great clients, do all of those things is awesome. So that's probably the biggest way that the podcast is, has helped me. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I think that that's probably the best way to build a relationship is just to talk to somebody. Just talk not, to people. And I mean, on a podcast, you're just having a conversation, but it's broadcast out to the the world, I guess. Yeah, for sure. It's you know, the goal was always to ha- to have it have that feel of like if you just kind of bellied up to the bar next to a couple of folks that were having a conversation and listen in. Yeah. That's always been the goal of it, right? Like sometimes guests will ask me, they'll be like, "Hey, you know, do you have a list of questions?" And I'm like, "I don't." I don't because I just want the conversation to go where the conversation goes. Sometimes we'll start out with, you know, kind of an, an agenda and maybe some objectives that we really want to talk about if there's a specific topic um, that, that we want to explore. But yeah, I think that's, that's just kind of a life lesson. Just, you know, it may not be comfortable, but the more comfortable you can get talking to people, it's just going to help accelerate that learning curve for whatever you do. Yeah, you just kind of go, like, go with the flow of the conversation. Yeah. So yeah. Leads you. yeah, like even me, like I have a bunch of questions that like I have, but I'm just like, whatever happens, happens, you know, whatever happens, whatever happens. It, leads, it leads to it leads to. So you kept talking about one screen. So tell me, or I guess, tell us, whoever's listening about a little about uh, one screen, a little more about it. Yeah. So we are building a marketplace for advertisers to find media owners who sell interesting bits of out of home uh, that would ultimately, uh, fit into a campaign they want to do. So kind of think of it like Amazon, but for out of home, you know, Hey, I want to get a billboard. I want to get some wrapped cars. I want to do a campaign with this objective. Uh, And we facilitate all that because out of home has been um, traditionally fragmented, but for good reason, because um, you know, it's, it's the wild west of the entrepreneurial spirit. Anyone can start an out of home company. Um, which is beautiful. If you find a space that you think someone would value for advertising, congratulations, you're in business. 
Um, but because of that, it's been traditionally hard to buy because there's so many people selling it. So, you know, what's best for me as an advertiser? How do I know? I don't know anyone who's ever done this before. I don't know anyone who's ever advertised on pizza box top is, tops. I don't know anyone who's ever advertised on the back of a food truck before. Like, is this right for me, basically? So what we're doing is we're building a directory of all of the companies and out of home and a really powerful search engine where an advertiser can come in and say, hey, I want to run this campaign. I have this kind of D2C clothing brand, and I want to reach people interested in hip hop in this particular borough of Brooklyn. Okay, cool. Like, Here's all the ways that you can reach them, and here's how you can ultimately measure whether or not it's driving the results that you care most about. So that's what we're doing. And, uh, and it's cool because it's all net positive, right? It's a, it's, it, these are all positive sum games. The advertiser wins because they find new things and new ways to, to, to grow their brand and to grow their companies. It's great for the media companies because they find new ways to um, you know, improve their business. They find additional revenue streams. Um, and ultimately, those are all good things. So uh, if we can make the world a little bit more interesting, maybe we don't need a, maybe we don't need a metaverse, Mark Zuckerberg. That meta thing is crazy, huh? It's crazy. It's, it's just crazy. Than, like, like, look at the awful. background behind me. Tell me the real world is not more interesting than whatever he could build into a pair of goggles. And that stupid VR thing he was doing. I don't know what was happening. In this there. is why we need out of home to uh, flourish, and and yeah. and we're seeing it, right? The brands that we work with are seeing. They're seeing new ways to drive traffic to their websites to profitably grow and scale their companies. Um, and that's awesome. It's awesome because the internet's gotten really, really expensive um, and less measurable. And, and, and also for good reason, because the, the abuse of, um, you know, our individual privacy and the, 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 the trade of data that's gone on and how that's been used Um you know, we think that it's a good thing that there's more controls being put in place. And to that, out of home just becomes more powerful when it does, because everything we do is based on real world behavior. You want to target sports fans? Guess what? Here's 10 sports bar and a stadium. I know where sports fans are and I can tell you the roads they drive on. Yeah. It's really just that easy. But being able to, to you know, close the feedback loop of how does that actually drive bottom line impact? That's what we're trying to do. That's like you. I think, I mean, always seeing on like LinkedIn and stuff seems like you guys do like a really cool and like obviously doing a little bit of like research on it beforehand. It seems like a really like progressive company, I guess, and in, in trying to push the whole like the whole out of home thing to people and how to help them grow their business, especially in like cities and stuff like behind you. I guess that's, yeah, it's pretty uh, cool. I'm, right? I'm assuming that's in New York, right? I guess. Yeah, that's. That's yeah. the iconic NASDAQ sign. And, you know, everybody gets on there at some point, hopefully uh, in, in their, in their company's history, but to be able to do this for a brand who'd never done out of home before, who, who maybe didn't know how to go about doing a, a multi-market takeover campaign uh, across multiple formats with multiple vendors. That's really the challenge. This campaign behind me was three markets it involved um, seven different vendors, 14 different formats, 15 different file sizes, and then to coordinate all of those things. How would, how would any one company just go about that? Um, you could certainly work with an agency, and there's, there's so many incredible specialist agencies. Um, I think what sets us apart is, is the way that we're approaching the data story for performance marketers. And, and being able to, to show performance marketers, here's how you can do out of home in a way that um, is really not too different than the things that you've, you've gotten used to doing on the internet the last 20 years. Yeah, I mean, I think that stuff's really interesting. Like even just from learning about it through uh, Geopath in the brief, like however many like weeks we did, it, like four weeks or four courses. I think I learned a lot about it. And then definitely something that I've uh, kept in mind when it comes to like, how I could help other people I might work for, whether it's an agency or a company or freelancer or whatever it may be. Yeah. You know, so, so no, let me ask you a couple of questions um, you know, with that. Cause really what I, what I'm seeing just in the conversations that we're having with advertisers is that everybody is trying to learn out of home right now. Some of the most accomplished success, 
successful, brilliant marketers in the world have never done out of home before. Um, and there is this gap for, for education on it. So now having gone through Geopath as someone who's going to be coming into, you know, the workforce here in the next six to nine months, like where, where do you envision yourself fitting into, um, you know, a marketing organization somewhere as, you know, a college graduate, but somebody who now has familiar familiarity with out of home, like, what do you want to do when you graduate school? Uh, I think that between, like I said, for my high school and for the local restaurant. So obviously the high school you're targeting people who are well, high school age, whatever that is, 14, 16, 18, whatever. And then the restaurant, which was definitely like, like families, more, more geared towards parents than like people like uh, 45 years old, let's say. I think it gave me a good, like broad spectrum of who to market to. So, I mean, my entire life I've been like, consuming different kinds of media, whether it's movies, music, whatever it may be, and social media since I was 12, which is probably a little too young for social media. But I think it's given Shoot, me a wide... You, you say, you're saying that in 2021. I know my son asked me for a phone for Christmas. I'm like, you're eight. No. I was like 12, I think, when I got a phone. And All right. I remember uh, that. Nah, if I ever have a kid, I think it's going to be uh, like 12 or 13 because you're just... I just too young you're not like a person yet you gotta like have your own like mindset and like before i think you go on social media because you can kind of especially today you can get in a lot of trouble and you can say some like wild things when you're young and not like know the consequences of it right it doesn't go away it doesn't you can't you can't delete the internet no like um, I, I grew up like just before that stuff so it's like you could get away with a lot more when you were 12 10 years ago, as opposed to when you're 12 now. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. So let me ask you that the, the brands that the brands that you engage with on a daily basis, like who are some of your favorite brands? Uh, I've, would you call a sports team a brand? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I'm a huge, huge lifelong, like Knicks fan. So, which has been a bit of a, uh, Bit of a mediocre existence, I it's guess. A little struggle bus there, my friend. Yeah, I mean, it's getting better. Or it's not this year, but what are you going to do? <laughs> and then, like, I don't know. I've been, like, a lifelong sports guy, like the Knicks and the Steelers. So I think I like to see how they market to, towards, like, the different generations. Because, I mean, obviously, they want to more focus on people who are younger. Yeah. Because that's just, like, who's going to keep coming in. You want to keep following the young people in. Then, but they also have to keep in – the families and stuff because you don't want to like only have like 19 year old fans so those are definitely that like watching how sports teams do stuff has given me a lot of insight but brands is that i pay attention to i pay attention to vans i like how they uh market because they're very like progressive in terms of like not progressive but they do a lot of stuff for different charities and they definitely like do a good job i think of knowing their audience which is like i guess me i, I guess i'm that audience so like, also obviously they've done a good job getting me in, but definitely. Like what, what are the things that, so, so, so the social cause is important yeah. to you. Yeah. How do they market to you? Is it through content? Is it through influencers? Is it through offline channels? Like, is it through experiential? Like, Hey, you could win, uh, you know, an opportunity to come to this event. Like how, what are the ways that Vans markets to you? I think it's a bit of, I don't know if I'd call it word of mouth. Cause like I remember when I was a kid, uh, my whole life I've been a massive fan of Kanye West, and I would always see him wearing Vans and stuff. And I'm like, oh, those shoes are like tight. Those, those are cool. He's ra he's rapped about wearing Vans, right? I feel like yeah. he's definitely yeah. all, all the time, man. Yeah. And it's like those are like those weren't that popular for a while. And then I was like, oh, these are sick. And now they're kind of back in the culture. So I guess I got it through like celebrity. Then interesting. Then I followed them on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff. So I always see them posting about like, I don't, I don't skateboard or surf or anything, but I like seeing the videos. I like, like that culture. So I think they do a good job of showing you the culture around it. And like, they do stuff for like, they have like different, like, like the, they do stuff for like autism. They like help. They have like a, like an autism foundation that they like, you buy their shoes, certain kinds of shoes and they give the money to them. And, I don't know. They do a good job of just really pinpointing their market. It's interesting, right? Because it's, 
you know, fundamental. It's it's a shoe, right? It's a, it's a yeah. consumer product that you know, and I know they have you know other lines too, but it was a skateboarding shoe. Yeah. Um, and if all they ever were was just a skateboarding shoe, they'd probably be out of business. There's so many different shoes. It's like a it's more of like a almost like a lifestyle brand now. Right. And they've built a community around it. And like all the things yeah. that you just described, like you were able to recall them so quickly because they made that much of an impact on you yeah. that it, it really does resonate. So it's it's interesting to think about that as an opportunity. I had a guest a, a couple of weeks ago. We talked about that. Um, the company that owns Kangol hats, like Samuel L. Jackson, you know, yeah. oh Cool J, uh, Kangol hats. They uh, it's a company called Bowman Hat Company, oldest hat company in the United States, and they have some other brands in the portfolio. And we were talking about just that, like that the opportunity today to just build a brand around a product, like whatever you pick, pick a product, whatever it is, first aid kits, uh, you know, snacks, what, whatever, pick anything that you can build a brand and a community around it and really become, you know, the center point of, of somebody's life. And, and, and that for the staying power of a consumer product or, you know, anything, I guess, for that matter, it's just amazing that, that you could just build a brand around something as simple as a shoe yeah. and, uh, and, and have that, that impact. So no, it's an awesome story, man. Thanks for, thanks for being willing to, to take I mean, a few on the fly there. I got like, well, I got like four pairs of that. I think it's also because they're cheap, Like they're not like, I think that's what they do a good job of is they're not, they're not like, hundred and fifty dollar pair of like that like Nikes. It's like what sure. like fifty nine dollars, like sixty five bucks for a pair of vans. Right. Like, that's, yeah, I have a like nice four, pair of shoes. Yeah, I got like four pairs of vans. I got like a couple hoodies, like their socks. Like I just I think it's cheap and affordable. Cause because again, I think they know their audience. Yeah. So they know that's who awesome. to give it to. But I mean I also think that it's never been harder to market, but also never been easier. Because like I have this. Yeah. Like my phone, right. like I see so many ads a day. So it's like, I think at the same time, it's easy to get out there, but it's hard to make it stick because there's just so mm. much, there's so much content out there now. That's the hot take repurpose house. That's the hot take. When you're going back to listen to this, that's, that's the hot take from Noah right there. Yeah, that's it. It is. And that, and that's, you know, to climb back on the soapbox for a second. Um, that's where out of homes just so powerful. Right. It's it, it happens in the real world. It happens yeah. in moments where we're not looking at our phones. There's an interesting um, there's an interesting kind of primal reaction to us looking at our phones all the time. And that is that when, you know, a few hundred years ago when you know, we were out you know, hunting buffalo and stalking deer through the the woods and things like that. When we would get ready to attack, we would focus our eyes in. It's a fight or flight response to have your eyes focused on a very small, very close point in front of you. When we are able to sit back and look out at the horizon, our bodies relax. We're more open to receiving messages. And that's kind of the, that's, that's the power of out of home. That's why it's got that one plus one equals three effect of not just making your social media work better and your direct mail work better and your cost per click come down, but it, it it creates an impact in a way that can't always be measured, but, but is always felt. I don't know why I feel like I know this brand, but I just feel like I know them. You just I can't, I can't, I can't specifically remember seeing the billboard. Why? Because you were in a relaxed receptive state and it's, it's the same way that we learn music. Um, I think the average adult knows something like 350 songs or something like that. I'm not one of them. I don't know the words to any songs. I'm the guy who's like making up the words or like sounding yeah. and trying to sing mumble. something that sounds. Yeah. Uh, I'd be a great mumble rapper. Um, but the reason for that is, is how, you know, when do you, when do you listen to music? You're not like in like some, Oh, like I've got to like, you know, like you're, you're hanging out, it's on in the background, you're working out, you're driving the car, right. It's in the background. Our bodies are just, it's osmosis. That's what it's osmosis. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's something kind of special about that. So when a brand has the opportunity to engage an audience, in a way that just kind of makes our experience in the real world better. Um, and then to have measurement associated with that, 
I think that that's a that's a much better way to tell a brand story today is is through the combination of online and offline. Yeah, I agree because I think like like I'll be on Twitter, right? And I'm like I was in my bed. It's like twelve thirty. I'm just on Twitter scrolling for nothing. And like for an example, like the ad I see the most on Twitter for some reason is Coinbase. Every day I see mm. a stupid coin, stupid coin. Have you signed ad. up yet? I love no, never. Base. No, nah, I was on I was on Robinhood right. for a couple of months. I bought AMC right when it started going, and then I panicked and I sold it like four minutes later. Oh man, you gotta have those diamond hands. Nah, I'm not. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm I'm too scared for that. I bought I bought into Doge. And I made like six hundred bucks. But that was about it. Hey, all yeah. right. Yeah, one of my friends missed out. He bought a GameStop like in like July, of, like before the place the new Playstations came out, and he bought it at, like two, and he sold it at like eight. Oh no! It, he missed out on like 120 grand or something. Oh right no! Oh, well, we'd have a Lamborghini in town for sure. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm. That's what I'm too scared of. Is like if I like <laughs> lost. That, like obviously he made like a, maybe like a couple hundred bucks, but like if I like I'd be like I made 500, but I would like lose like 120 thousand, and I'd be in shambles for like months. Something like that happened to me once, and that was a very low point in my life. I had a small nest egg, and I was trying to go out on my own. And, and that was the nest egg. And I thought that I had learned an investment technique called uh, called an iron condor, which is an options trade for any any traders listening. They're, they're nodding their heads. Well, I thought I had understood it. I didn't understand it. And I lost the entire nest egg in about a four-week period. Oh. I watched the whole thing go to zero. And it was one of the lowest points in my life because I was like, well, that was the money that was supposed to get me through the next three months while I try to like build a business. Um, so I can certainly appreciate that. Um, I guess the moral of the story is there's nothing we can't recover from so long as uh, you still got, you got air in your lungs and ground under your feet. You, 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 there's, there's just nothing that you can't get past, I guess. So I uh, definitely understand it. No, I can't, I can't do that. I went to a casino one time for like two hours and i was like nah i lost like six bucks i was like it's too much for me i gotta go i gotta go home same for me it's same for me i, like, I can't do this i lose like five dollars playing like a 20 dollar game of poker with my friends and i'm sweating so funny so I funny i well, do not no like uh, this is like generally like we this is this is like a, a good length for for a great episode so um I want to make sure that folks know how to get in touch with you and connect with you, but I do want to give you an opportunity. If you got one more question um, that I might be able to, uh, to, to help with. Probably yeah. Let me just get, a grab like, let me just grab a cat. Okay, let me say here. Oh, well, let's, let's do it. Do, let's do it. Uh, advice to students or the younger generation. Advice. To like that are me that are going yeah. into marketing. I suppose. Yeah. Be open-minded. Be open-minded. Um, I think that having been a college student much later in life, I was 27 when I went to Centenary. I had a kid. I was going through a divorce. Um, I had like a little bit more life experience. And the thing that I saw then, the thing that I saw, maybe not so much in this past semester, but maybe because then class wasn't there. But the thing that I see most frequently is, is having this kind of closed-minded idea of, here's what I'm going to do next. And if it doesn't look like this, then I'm not, not even going to look at it. And yeah. so many opportunities are missed that way. And especially in today's world, right? Like I have the opportunity to work for an incredible company that probably two years ago would have been founded or based in like a major metropolitan area that I wouldn't have had the qualifications to work at. Um, but because of the way that the environment is today, I was I started a podcast about an industry that I thought was in, interesting. I have zero of the like resume experience that would um, you know probably qualify me to be here. But because of that, because of the remote work opportunity, I'm able to do all of those things. So so that's that's my biggest piece of advice, um, I guess, really to anybody. But but especially just coming out of school is that. The job market that existed when you entered school four years ago and the job market that exists today are not the same. They're Sounds not the different. same. Be open-minded, be open-minded to companies, be open-minded to roles. If you can work at a startup and like you have that kind of entrepreneurial 
hustle gene in you, like find a startup to go work at because you will learn so much about business, so much about your role, but other people's roles, how to lead and communicate, how to do that effectively in a remote environment, potentially. Um, the opportunities right now that exist are just unbelievable. And hiring is a, is a, is a real challenge right now for a lot of companies. If you, if you drive through just about any town, anywhere, there's help wanted signs in every window. And I was getting tires this morning at Mavis and they tried to give me a job. Um, so, so Mavis is hiring, uh, but don't worry, Sam, don't worry, Greg, I'm not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, that's it. Be open-minded because the, the, the world right now just looks amazing. So, um, that would be, that would be my advice. Well, that's good advice. Not just for me, but I think anybody else who listens or, yeah, I guess it's, I guess it's really sound advice for the upcoming marketers of the world good good i'm glad that this was helpful uh hey if you're listening and you found it to be helpful uh, i'm gonna ask you to like share subscribe do all that stuff in a minute i got my like share subscribe hoodie on because uh i'll give you one story for for the outtake here Uh, my son went as a Fortnite skin for halloween and because you know i'm his dad and it's my job to roast him i went as a youtube gamer so I got this like, share, subscribe hoodie. I have a Twitch hat. Um, I had headphones and Xbox controller, and I just followed him around all night. So uh, that's the like, share, subscribe hoodie. But Noah, I know that you're you're pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, spell your last name. Help folks uh, find you on the interwebs in case they want to hire you. And again, his portfolio website is down below. So check out what Noah was up to in that class. But Noah, how do folks find you on LinkedIn? All right, so if you want to find me on LinkedIn, uh, let's just go to LinkedIn, the little, hit the little search bar. My name is spelled N-O-A-H. My last name is P-E-S-H-K-O-P-I-A. And yeah, that's me. If you want to shoot me an email, it's my first name and my last name, 33 at gmail.com. And yeah, boom. If you got, if you got, if you got anything you want to know or you want to, if anybody out there wants to reach out, Please do, please. Hit him up. Snatch this kid up. He's yeah. got a bright, bright future ahead of him. And uh, and again, he's geopath certified. Awesome. Most important thing. It's the most important thing. <laughs> no, Noah, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun to be on the other side of it. Uh, of course, and you. maybe share some insight and some of the story that folks just didn't know before. So thank you. Of course. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right. If you found this to be helpful, entertaining, interesting, any of the above, please make sure to share it with somebody who you think could benefit. As always, give it a like, give it a follow, give it a subscribe, and we'll see y'all next time. Quarter century, I finally came to my senses. I finally got my hand up on the tinted Benz, kid. I see the world clear through my tinted lenses. With the dream and the drive, the possibilities endless. Now print that, send this all the way to Tokyo. Take a trip down south, down to Mexico. Next stop, Shanghai, the world-class trade show. First class all the way, because that's how we roll. Yeah, call us the rock star businessman. Rock and shows. We handle business, man. We got our own future in the palm of our hands, cause divided we.